For those of us working within the final industry, it's vital for us to know what it is we're protecting against. Here at Rutland, we like to remind ourselves daily that we enhance life safety at every fire level. And to be truly informed as to exactly what that entails, we're going to look at what happens during a fire test. In this case, we're looking at a European standard EN 1634 Part 1 test of fire resistant door sets. My name is Neil Smith, I assist with technical and compliance here at Brooklyn. A very large part of my role is overseeing physical fire tests and performance tests, both for new product development, but also on behalf of our clients and network partners. I'm privileged to see these tests on a regular basis, but today we're just going to look at taking you behind the scenes and see the in-depth process of testing a fire door set at a testing house. So the first part of the process of a fire test involves setting up the structural wall. That's the door aperture fitting the door set in readiness for testing. In most labs, the furnace structural wall into which the doors are fitted is approximately 3 metres by 3 metres. It's usually constructed as block work wall with lintels or flexible steel frame wall with plasterboard. So once the wall has been built, the door set and door assembly is fitted and sealed just as a real life application. Once the door sets have been fitted and sealed, the testing lab adds thermal couples and they fix the thermal couples to the face of the door, the frame and any glazing or areas of concern. And this is so the temperatures can be closely monitored throughout the whole fire test. The door sets are then closely inspected for normal functionality. So this involves checking the closing forces of the door, assessing any tolerances and adjusting the door closer as required. This is to ensure nominal operation. Often at this point in the test, there's opportunity to make adjustments before the fire test takes place. So once all checks have been completed satisfactorily, the door set is then offered up in its frame to the furnace. To do this, the wall panel frame containing the test subject is craned into place fully sealed, creating a box effectively, where the fire testing will take place. And this is simulating, or as near as, a room where a fire is broken out. Finally, distortion measurements are taken before starting the test. Now we're all set. So at this stage, um, starts by clearing the area and the sponsor giving the permission to fire the furnace and start burning the samples. Much like a real world fire, there's very few signs at first that the fire has actually broken out. But for the first five minutes or so, the fire is just burning inside, the furnace temperature and air pressure rising rapidly. During the fire test in a controlled environment like this, these parameters are computer controlled to simulate as near as possible a realistic fire breakout. And the way we can see this is with this ISO curve. For this EN 1634 part one fire test, ceramic pads are actually attached to the heat sensors, effectively tricking the computer's temperature read and thereby delaying the real time temperature reading. The result of this is a faster heating time and more onerous test than say the British national standard BS 476 part 22. Now, now that the fire is um, burning vigorously, we're approaching a phase called flashover. Now this is what happens as a result of all the natural gases and carbon building up within the furnace and reaching a burning point. At flashover, the entire room completely combusts and causes a distinct rising temperature and pressure spike on the chart. Visually, this can be seen from the unexposed side where we are, of the door by an abundance of smoke and um, escaping from tiny gaps between the door, door leaf and the frame. The pressure inside the furnace is pushing the smoke through these tiny gaps as it finds them. And the intermessent, it's important to know, is not yet fired off at this stage in the fire. 
because it's not fully up to the operating temperature. And you can you can actually see little flames flickering low down. If you look behind the bottom of the door, the coolest point of the furnace, where the intermessant is not yet activated in that coolest part of the furnace. So at this point, with unlatched doors, and this is really important to note, the door closer is the only component on these door assemblies that's actually holding the door firmly closed. Now between around approximately 12 and 20 minutes, more smoke starts to appear as the heat activated graphite firing off. This happens from the top of the frame downwards, as the top of the frame being the hottest part. So as the heat continues to build up inside the furnace, the door is entirely sealed to prevent fire spreading to what would be in the real world, a fire escape room, for example, or other parts of the building. In fire tests like this, a door set is measured on several things from fire integrity through to insulation. So once the test is run into course, the results are carefully analysed. In this case, it was a 30-minute test we were looking at, and it achieved well over that, which is what we call category B overload. As you can see from these fire tests, every component on a door set must effectively work together as an overall system. We take fire and smoke seriously, extremely seriously. The fire can break out in minutes and cause devastating effects if not controlled. That's the reason we put so much time and effort into helping door manufacturers and installers getting their doors right. We want to be confident that our products are making buildings safer places to live and safer places to work. Enhancing life safety is our number one priority.